Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited to do this video here because I haven't done a money savings video in quite a while and I really thought I was overdue. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I looked at some things that you can use alternatively for your crafting. Some of these tools in the crafting market are very expensive and if you're a new crafter or even a seasoned crafter, this stuff adds up. So I went and picked out a bunch of things that either I needed or I thought could use be used for an alternative uh, craft tool. So let's get started here. The first thing I have is a little, I'm going to use this for a garbage can on my desk. Uh, you don't need something this big, um, but I do a lot of paper crafting at once. And so this is really helpful so that I'm not having to like reach around and drop my garbage in the trash. And also silver and gray is one of the themes in my room. So it fits perfectly when I'm not using it as garbage. This next item is, I suppose, a serving tray. I got it in the um, party section. And I loved how low it was so that it will fit in my Alex drawer and it will fit in the desk that I stand at. And so um, it's got three compartments. You can just kind of put the, the tools that you use most often in or to store them per their category in your uh, drawers. And so I really like that. I thought it was good and it's good quality plastic as well. So the next item is along the same lines of a plastic organizer. This one right here is, I believe you're going to find in the uh, storage for like bath or uh, beauty. Of course, there's lots of uses for this, but I'm going to use it to hold my stickles. So I like to store my stickles upside down. And the reason for that is so that they're easier to use. But I also find that the other one I have for nail polish, it almost looks just like this. It's too big and they flop around. So here I have just great, perfect fit for my uh, stickles in an upside down fashion, which the Nouveau Drops would fit as well perfectly. So I picked that up as well. All right, our next item here is going to be um, a chopping mat, so a cutting mat. And you get two pieces in here for the dollar price and they are 11 by 14. The What I've done with these is I have it for two purposes. One is I'm using it for a mat, so I'm gonna be using it as a slick surface to use my ink blending, and I'm gonna demo that for you in a second. But you can also cut these down into whatever size you want, and you can use them as, uh, I use mine for like a mobile um, palette. And I also use it to flick because I like flicking my paint brushes if I'm getting paint flicks off of something flexible because I find that I get a better, the, the paint flicks get better uh, air time. <laughs> they flick everywhere, so it's great. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick demo here with a few Distress Oxide inks. So I have just um, squished them down on there and then I'm just gonna pick them up. And to me, this works just as well as any $20, $10 craft mat that you're gonna find out there. So just a uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, alternative for us crafters. Um, I'm gonna show you this white microfiber cloth in the car section of the Dollar Tree. It's so fluffy. It cleans my stuff really well. I could uh, clean my brushes on it. Um, I clean up my work surface. I just really like it. I've bought a bunch and I have those readily available. So I'm gonna show you here on the mat as well. I'm going to ink blend. And I'm ink blending because my next thing I want to show you is an ink cleaner, or excuse me, a brush cleaner. And so I'm going to pull out, again from the car section, I'm going to pull out this huge sponge here, and I'm going to use that as a surface to clean. Now, what you can do, and you can see here it gets it nice and clean, I'm going to move into the next color, and so on and so forth. But what you can do is you can cut this in half long ways so that you'll have two that look the exact same shape but they're thinner and then you can have four sides to clean your brushes. So I thought it worked really well, highly recommend it. Okay, so the next thing is we are going to um, heat emboss using this embossing powder here. I probably shouldn't have used the chunky because it kind of flew everywhere but um, Anyway, we're going to use some sticky ink and then some heat embossing powder, and I'm gonna use this little gadget here, which 
are tongs from the kitchen section. The reason I liked them was because I can hold my project away from me with a good distance and it's rubber and like a silicone on the end. And when it's silicone, it's easy to clean. So if I get embossing powder melted on there, it comes right off. Another Dollar Tree item that I'm showcasing right here is this clipboard. So this is really good for heating things um, atop it so it'll be uh, so you don't warp your your mat underneath. So that's really helpful as well. Okay, so let's talk about my next idea here. So I have um, this intricate die and I have um, the, that tool that you can use. It's got the bristles on it and it gets the die pieces out. So I was like, okay, we saw this. I say we, me and my daughter were looking for stuff. So we saw this in the Dollar Tree and I was like, oh, this is like almost exactly like what it's made of. And I also picked up these poker tools with score uh, pieces on the end. So you get both the poker and the score and you get two pieces in the pack. So I thought, okay, this is good. I'm gonna try these out for die cutting. So I got the poker tool and it is very, very sharp. I mean, this thing is a weapon. So that I guess can be good when you're trying to poke stuff out of your cardstock, but if it's stuck in there real tight, it might poke a hole through it. So just be careful. So it's more so used for the excess stuff that's on the die that you're trying to get out. I wouldn't recommend poking through the actual piece of that you're, that you die cut. So here I'm just showing you, I'm trying to pull apart my die and then I'm like, okay, I'll put this on top of my sponge. I'll roll it over. It should pop right out. No, it didn't. I was like, why is this not working? It's just not working because I will show you the tool that is intended for this. It rolls on its own back and forth. So when you do it like that and it moves with it, it's poking through those pieces, it comes right out. So if you can think of a way to make me make this work from the Dollar Tree item, let me know. But until then, I will keep my Spellbinders tool in one off to the side because that was a bust. All right, so moving on to the next item here. Now this is that blue sticky stuff. Do you remember we used to use this and put it on the walls to hold stuff up? So I used my mat here, so I'm gonna do some stenciling, and I just put four pieces down onto the mat and then two pieces to hold the stencil. I'm taking out my next product that I got, which is this baking spatula. It's got two ends, one small, which fits into those little jars perfectly of like the Nouveau Moonstone and, and um, the new Stickles one, it fits perfectly in there. Um, but it has two sides. So you have this small side and then you have this big side of this silicone spatula and it cleans up like a dream. It comes off there so easily. It's just like any other craft tool that you could pick up because it's the same material. So I highly recommend getting one of those as well when you're there. So here's my final, um, my final look at my stencil and they're reusable. So just like you put that purple tape aside and your washi tape aside to reuse it, you can reuse these blue little pieces. So I thought that was super fun to see. It didn't tear my projects at all. All right, so this one right here I picked up because I thought it was fun to put my watercolors in to have little places for them to drop. And this is a really good price if you just need one. And if it's just you, you can clean this up very easily. But if you wanted to get more of these, they're more cost effective to get from, let's say, Amazon in bulk or maybe even a big box store. So keep that in mind. But for one, that was good. All right, so I love using my hot glue gun, but I hate burning my finger. So I picked up these three little silicone pieces here. Uh, these are really good quality. They're thick. Um, I've seen them cheaper online, but they're thinner. Now this is an interesting item. These are craft clamps. I don't know why you would call them craft clamps. Like, is there a specific thing that you would use <laughs> these clamps for in crafting? I don't know, but this is what I'm using them for. So what we're gonna do here is just clip them after I glue it right to the side there to hold it. It doesn't indent your project, it's good to go. So that could be a little bit of a helper um, if you don't have something heavy to put on. This idea is a stretch, not a total bust but it's a stretch. All right, let's move on. Uh, I need to clean up my surface here. So I picked up this paintbrush um, and I'm just gonna sweep it as if it's a mini broom. That's it, mini broom. I need a mini dustpan now too, <laughs> but I used paper instead. But you know, it's also good to get, um, you know, powder from your powder bag off your projects and just little cleanup things here and there, so. 
All right, so we are moving into the next item, which is when you have jagged edges on your cardstock, sometimes you could take a sander and just kind of get rid of some of that. So I picked up a sander from the Dollar Tree and I'm trying to get some of those pieces off. So I think if I had to choose my craft sander, it works better and kind of faster. I was able to get a much smoother surface from that sander, um, as you can see here. But it wasn't as clean as my craft sander. Uh, but it's a good alternative for a dollar. All right, so let's move into this next one, which is a craft knife, exacto knife. This was, dare, dare I say, a nightmare. <laughs> this does not work. Pay the money and get a good craft knife um, because this was shaky, unsturdy. I thought I was going to slice through my fingers. I did not, it maybe was user error, but here I'm showing you with my, with my good craft knife. So I thought, okay, well maybe it's a blade problem. So I tried another blade. It's not, it wasn't a pressure problem. Uh, it just, it was the item. And I mean, for a dollar, I guess, what are you expecting? You can probably open up your Amazon packages with that. So there's that. Now this next one, I would say this is a hack as well as a tool. So I saw this 90 degree angle um, ruler and it's metal. It's pretty heavy duty. So I thought, what if I use this in my Stampin' platform so that I can have images go off the edge? and I can line it up because I know there's tools out there that do this for you. I know they're not a dollar. <laughs> so I tried it and it works. So here I'm gonna show you, um, I stamped it once and then all you have to do is put that ruler right back into your stamping platform and line it up again. Now, I'm gonna show you, I can just flip this around and I got perfect placement, perfect inking. Um, but I can tell you that this will not fit into the regular or mini Misty size. Uh, it would fit in the 12 by 12, but um, it does fit in any of the Tim Holtz platforms because the, of the openings of the platforms. So it worked like a charm. I was so excited to find this hack um, slash alternative. Now, if you want to make your own, there's also the idea of just buying these rulers cutting them to size and then hot gluing them together. And then you have your own insert for any size stamp and platform. So that's an option as well. I didn't get a chance to do it, but that idea came to me and I thought, well, you can customize it any way you see fit. Okay, so moving on, we are gonna see if the scoring edge of that poker tool works and it does. So it's pretty much like a two in one tool. So that was pretty good. Now I picked up some shelf liner there because I, when I am using my die cutting machine, it's a, it's a manual one, it slides all over the place and drives me bananas. So I thought, let me put something non-slip under to see if it's gonna work, right? So that's the actual product. Here's my demo of me doing this without holding the lid or the handle. I know you're probably like, well, Mary, that's what the handle's for. <laughs> it is, but it still slides all over the place. So now I'm gonna put it on my shelf liner and I am not going to hold the handle. And look at that, it doesn't move at all. I was like, where have you been all my life, shelf liner? But I also saw fellow crafters using it underneath their um, inking uh, pads. And I saw inking pads, that's not what they're, ink pads. I saw Ryan from Glitter Grunge Greetings. He does this little trick and see, did you see how much that moved around? Let me show you again and then we're gonna slow it down for effect. Do you see? I can't even get any ink on that thing. So if you put it on top of one of these little shelf liners, you, it doesn't move at all. And you can just use your one hand on your paper and the other hand on the ink. And I was like, listen, that is a genius idea. So thank you so much, Ryan, for showing that. I had to share with everybody. All right, let's move on to the next, uh, product that I picked up. Now this isn't how it comes packaged. In fact, this is probably half of the roll. That's really poor demoing on my part, but it was laying there and I was like, oh, this is from the Dollar Tree too. So I grabbed it, uh, but it's a bunch of uh, double-sided sticky foam adhesive and it's really strong. And so I recommend it. It doesn't come off as easy on the back as my spoiled self would like, but it's definitely worth the dollar. All right. So if you saw the thumbnail, you might've seen the 
nail polish. What am I going to use clear nail polish for? Well, I'm going to use it to embellish. So let's say you want to make something shiny, but maybe you don't want to do a lot of uh, dimension or bulk, if you will, on the shiny part. So it's not going to pop up like glossy accents or nouveau glaze. Um, in fact, this is a lot more similar to if I was to heat emboss this with clear embossing powder. So I'm going to place uh, two coats of this nail polish on these spots. And it's hard to see here, but the next picture you'll see it much better. And it really gives just like a really fun sheen. So it's a great alternative and it's a dollar. And so I thought, hey, that, that could work. Um, you could put this on, say, if you did a water scene and you can cover that and it dries pretty quickly too. All right, so this next one here, I use this adhesive eraser for so many things. I'm gonna show you a couple ways here if you get glue all over your desk. Um, I don't, I'm not usually that messy with glue, this was a demo. <laughs> but I saw one at the Dollar Tree, and I was like, surely this can't be the same thing, because I know I didn't pay a dollar. So, but it surely is, it is the exact same as the one that's marketed for crafters. So I got this in the, I want to, the adhesive section. So um, next to the Goo Gone. Goo Gone, is that what it's called? Anyway, it takes up your adhesive um, perfectly. It's wonderful. It works really, really well. Another thing that I like to use my adhesive eraser for is to clean off my scissors. Um, I get a lot of gunk on my Tim Holtz snips and this takes it off and makes them like brand new. You can also use alcohol wipes if you didn't know, but that will take off the adhesive too. Um, but this works brilliantly. Just be careful and don't, you know, don't go too close to the edge or to the, um, the blade. I don't know why I'm second guessing that, that word, but anyway, just be careful. So tried and true, I've showed this before, but I was talking Dollar Tree, so I had to show it again. This is the poster board here, and this is four to a pack. And um, I'm gonna use this instead of, and as an alternative to, Yupo paper for alcohol inks. And you can also get it in this monster size. So this is like a huge piece of poster board, and this is gonna actually be a piece of um, art that I work on uh, with my alcohol inks. So I'm gonna show you a demo here. I'm gonna lay down some blending solution. And then I'm going to use alcohol pearl inks from Ranger. You want to make sure you shake those up really well. And then I'm going to just drop in. I have found, I tried a couple tools, but I have found that this, um, this blower right here works the best. Now I've also uh, thought of maybe using, if you have uh, your, you know, like one of those you used to use to suction your child, um, that would probably work too. And they may be cheaper. I don't know. I didn't try it out, but uh, I just got to thinking while I was thinking of alternatives. But I love this blower tool. I think it is just brilliant and it gives me such good results. So I'm going to sped this up quite a bit, but I'm going to show you um, how well this works on this poster board. This poster board, if you cut it down into fours, you're going to get four pieces of five by seven sheets. And four times four is 16. And that's the extent of the public math I will do. However, no, I'll do some more. So if I get 16 sheets for a dollar, I guarantee you that is a lot cheaper than the Yupo paper. So Yupo paper is about a dollar a sheet for a five by seven. Now there are some drawbacks. You can't clean this off like you can Yupo, um, but I really like this for practice. So if you think Yupo is better and you want to use it for your actual projects, get it. You know, that's great, but for practice, I think this was really, really fun. And I really loved the results. I thought it worked really well. And that will do it for these items that you can get at the Dollar Tree for alternative craft items. I really hope that this was helpful. I'm so sorry to our international friends that do don't have a branded Dollar Tree, but if you have something similar, walk through and just, you know, get out of the norm of your box and just think how you can use some of these things in different ways. I really encourage that because you're gonna save a lot of money if you can find some alternatives for your craft room. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Go ahead and share it if you feel you have crafty friends that might benefit from something like this. And if you did like it, you can hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more from me. On the screen, you'll see other like videos where I do some comparisons to help us save a buck. 
We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.